Hello everyone, how are you guys doing today? My name is Iris and welcome to my channel. Uh, today I'm going to be reacting to uh, George Carlin uh, Immune System and Germs. Uh, I believe I've seen that bit and that must have been a long time ago but I think it is very very relevant to what's happening with Covid all around the globe. So without any delays let's get to George Carlin Immune System and Germs. Here we go. It's just one more way of reducing your liberty and reminding you that they can fuck with you any time they want. As long as you put up with it. As long as you put up with it. Which means, of course, any time they want. Because that's what Americans do now. They're always willing to trade away a little of their freedom in exchange for the feeling, the illusion of security. What we have now is a completely neurotic population obsessed with security and safety and crime and drugs and cleanliness and hygiene and germs. There's another thing, germs. Where did this sudden fear of germs come from? in this country. Have you noticed this? The media constantly running stories about all the latest infections, salmonella, E. coli, hantavirus, bird flu, and, and Americans are, they panic easily, so now everybody's running around scrubbing this and spraying that and overcooking their food and repeatedly washing their hands, trying to avoid all contact with germs. It's ridiculous and it goes to ridiculous lengths in prisons. Before they give you a lethal injection, they swab your arm with alcohol. <laughs> it's true. It's true. It's true. Well, well, they don't want you to get an infection. <laughs> and you can see their point. Wouldn't want some guy to go to hell and be sick. <laughs> Would take a lot of the sportsmanship out of the whole execution. Fear of germs, why these fucking pussies. <laughs> you can't even get a decent hamburger anymore. They cook the shit out of everything now because everybody's afraid of food poisoning. Hey, where's your sense of adventure? Take a fucking chance, will you? You know how many people die in this country from food poisoning every year? 9,000, that's all, it's a minor risk. <laughs> <laughs> Take a fucking chance, bunch of goddamn pussies. Besides, what do you think you have an immune system for? It's for killing germs. Exactly. But it needs practice. It needs germs to practice on. <laughs> so, so listen. Damn so right. listen. If you kill all the germs around you and live a completely sterile life, then when germs do come along, you're not going to be prepared. And never mind ordinary germs, what are you going to do when some super virus comes along that turns your vital organs into liquid shit? It's already here. I'll tell you what you're going to do. You're going to get sick, you're going to die, and you're going to deserve it because you're fucking weak and you've got a fucking weak <laughs> immune system. Now, uh, God damn it. All right, let me tell you a true story about immunization, okay? When I was a little boy in New York City in the 1940s, we swam in the Hudson River, and it was filled with raw sewage, okay? We swam in raw sewage, you know, to cool off. And at that time, the big fear was polio. Thousands of kids died from polio every year. But you know something? In my neighborhood, no one ever got polio. No one ever. You know why? Because we swam in raw sewage. <laughs> yeah. It strengthened our immune systems. The polio never had a prayer. We were tempered in raw shit. <laughs> so. So personally, I never take any special precautions against germs. I don't shy away from people who sneeze and cough. I don't wipe off the telephone. I don't cover the toilet seat. And if I drop food on the floor, I pick it up and eat it. Five second rule. I eat it. Yes, I do. Even if I'm at a sidewalk cafe in Calcutta, <laughs> the poor section, on New Year's morning during a soccer riot, and you know something, in spite of all that so-called risky behavior, I never get infections. I don't get them. I don't get colds, I don't get flu, I don't get headaches, I don't get upset stomachs. And I, you know why? Because I got a good, strong immune system and it gets a lot of practice. My immune system is equipped with the biological equivalent of fully automatic military assault rifles with night vision and laser scopes. And we have recently acquired phosphorus grenades 
cluster bombs, and anti-personnel fragmentation mines. <laughs> So, when my white blood cells are on patrol, reconnoitering my bloodstream, seeking out strangers and other undesirables, if they see any, any suspicious looking germs of any kind, they don't fuck around. <laughs> they whip out the waxen weapons, they wax the motherfucker, and deposit the unlucky fellow directly into my colon. <laughs> into my colon. There's no nonsense. There's no Miranda warning. There's none of that three strikes and you're out shit. <laughs> First defense, bam, into You're the done. colon you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. And speaking of my colon, I want you to know I don't automatically wash my hands every time I go to the bathroom, okay? Can you deal with that? <laughs> sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. You know when I wash my hands? When I shit on them. <laughs> That's the only time. That's the o And you know how often that happens? Tops, tops, two, three times a week. Tops, <laughs> tops. Maybe a little more frequently over the holidays, you know what I mean? And I'll tell you something else, my well-scrubbed friends. You don't always need a shower every day. Did you know that? It's overkill. Unless you work out or work outdoors or for some reason come in intimate contact with huge amounts of filth and garbage every day, you don't always need a shower. All you really need to do is to wash the four key areas. Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. Got that? Armpits, asshole, crotch, and teeth. In fact, you can save yourself a whole lot of time if you simply use the same brush on all four areas. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you. So, that was George Carlin on immune system and germs. And I absolutely 100% agree with every single word he said. Maybe don't use the same brush for all four parts. That's just, you know, I mean, he's just making a joke out of it. Uh, but the thing is, in order for you to get stronger, your immune system to get better and stronger, you need to get ill. You need to have bacteria to fight. You need to fight them and get immunized to it. Hence the word immune. And in order to be immune to these things, you need to, from very young age, need to be in uh, get in contact. That's why when kids eat mud or uh, what do you call it, sand and all that shit, it's okay, they put their hand in the toilet and they uh, they are perfectly fine because even if they do get a bit of fever, uh, the thing is fever is actually your immune system at work fighting or whatever bacteria you may have got. Fever is good for your body. Whenever you get it, that means your immune system is working. That's how you get fever. And when you take paracetamol, it's just to get rid of the symptoms of fever so you are not feeling too down. Even though your immune system fighting and you're taking paracetamol or whatever painkillers or anything, that is not to help your fever. That is actually just to get rid of the symptoms of the fever. But at the same time, your immune system is working hard whenever you get fever. So that's why they say when you, uh, your kids at a young age are, uh, what do you call it, introduced to different bacteria, your immune system starts getting better. Because when the child gets ill, it's actually learning how to deal with it in the future. And we live in a time where we're constantly washing our hands and stuff like that. And I don't think it's going to help us in a long term. But still, we need to be careful. We need to be careful and we need to make sure we follow the correct guidelines. That don't necessarily mean while you're in your own vicinity, you need to keep washing your hand. When you're hot at home, don't worry about shit like that. You can wash your hand when you go to the toilet and you know what I mean. But still, I absolutely love everything he said. It was great. It was brilliant. And I'm sorry for a bit of a long explanation or a rant, but I couldn't help myself. But, uh, as usual, it was Professor George Carlin and he did what he always does. Uh, and I'm, uh, it's just brilliant, man. I really did enjoy that. And I hope you did too. If you did, like, subscribe, share and leave a comment. I'll see you guys next time.